Okay, hello everyone. I'm Markison and I'm going to be giving my first impressions of the new Dominion Renaissance cards. So today the rulebook for Dominion Renaissance uh, was released with all the cards. So previously with the previews I had given my first impressions of the previews after having played with them a bit during the preview week. But this time I haven't read I haven't read or played or even read any of these cards that I'm about to review so um, this is like a blind first impression so all this time it's the first time I'm seeing the card with the exception of like having to cut around the sides uh, I was using the uh, window snipping tool to like just take a, a frame of all of these um, directly from the Dominion Online website so they're a lot crisper the picture than uh, my earlier videos for first impressions but on the uh, with unfortunately the borders are a bit cut off so, but still, I'm able to do the snipping without actually reading any of the cards. So I kind of like avert my eyes from the card text. So I only see like maybe the art and maybe the card price. But at this point, I've forgotten most of the card prices. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to be uh, reading each of these cards and uh, seeing what they do. And then giving my impressions on them, you know, for fun. Let's see. So the first card we have here is Border Guard. Um... It's plus one action. Re it costs two. Okay, so plus one action. Reveal the top two cards of your deck. Put one into your hand and discard the other. If both were actions, take the lantern or, or horn. So lantern and horn, these are um, artifacts. So only one person can have the artifact at a time. So they're competitive in that sense. Uh, let's take a look at what the lantern and horn are. So the horn is... Once per turn, when you discard a border guard from play, you may put it onto your deck. Okay, so let me see what the synergy is. So this is always putting a card into your hand. It's kind of a sifting thing. And uh, if you're sifting enough actions, then you can top deck it. So you're sifting every turn. Once per turn. So you can only top deck once. So it's not an alchemist. But it's a cute effect for two that... If you're the only person getting border guards, that's something. Let's look at the lantern. Lantern is your border guards reveal three cards and discard two. It takes all three being actions to take the horn. Okay, so it kind of bumps up the sifting of um, the, f the uh, what's it called? The border guards. Actually, it turns them into... Discard, reveals three cards and discards two. Okay, so it doesn't... It kind of makes it like Forum, actually, right? Uh, forum is you draw three cards and discard two. But this is reveal three cards and discard two. So it's not the same. It's not like Forum because you can... Let's say with Forum, you could keep all three cards that you drew and then discard two junk cards that were already in your hand. This, you can only draw from one of the top three cards. So... And yeah, uh, these, these actually two artifacts, I had to snip them from the actual rule book. That's why the art is a bit wonky. But for all the other cards, are going to be crisper. Um, it's kind of a cool like I feel like this is just a a sim well kind of a fun card not doing something dramatic but you know you maybe you get a few and if you're the only one getting them and if you have a lot of actions in your hand like border guards or something so if you bought like five border guards um, that would be pretty good because uh, the border guards reveal two border guards and then you take the either the lantern or the horn but if you take the lantern first, it's going to be harder to take the horns. But, you know, if you take the horn, it'll be easy to get the lantern. Until someone steals a horn from you. So it's like, if you're the only person with border guards, um, you're pretty well off. Because, you know, you take the lantern and then you take the horn. No, you take the horn and then the lantern. And uh, no one's really going to stop you. So it's easy to, probably easy enough to get the lantern if you already have the horn. Because you're top decking this every turn, eventually you'll get the lantern too. But if you take the lantern first, it's going to be harder to take the horn because you have to reveal three actions. So that's what I'm thinking. If you're the only one with the border guard, it's going to be easy to get both of these. But if you're conte if it's contested, it's going to be kind of weird, and you're going to be stuck with the lantern and not be able to get the horn and not top deck them. But either way, even if you don't ignoring the artifacts, it's an okay it's an okay sifting card. You know, it's kind of like a uh, spy but for two without the attack. So at least you're not attacking the opponent and wasting time, but you know, it's it's kind of a stack of these is not going to be that, it's not going to resolve that quickly. It might be a bit annoying, 
honestly. But eh. Let's go on to the next card. Cargo ship. So it's a three cost action duration. Uh, by the way, the previous card was, I'm pretty sure it was just an action. Yeah. So the cargo ship is a action duration. Costs three. Plus two. Once per turn. Once this turn, when you gain a card, you may set it aside face up on this. At the start of your next turn, put it into your hand. Okay, so, uh, you know, I was always thinking about a card like this sh should exist, where, like, you you gain something this turn, and then you get to, like, uh, save it for the next turn. So this is kind of cool. It's kind of thematic. You know, you're getting your cargo. You know, you, you buy that thing, and you have the cargo ship that kind of uh, sends it to you. That whole seaside thing that had a theme of next turn. Seaside care about next turn. This fits with that. So this feels like real Seaside card. So this is kind of like... And it's good because it's a duration. So durations were introduced in Seaside and weren't uh, didn't return for a long time until Adventures. So, you know, seeing a duration card actually have that Seaside feel is great. I, I really like it. As for the card itself, well, you know, Terminal Silver. But whatever you're buying with it, uh, you're top decking it. So it's like, imagine if you have this on turn three, you buy a five, and then on turn four, you have the five cost in hand. It's like you opened with the five cost. It's kind of cool. And then you're going to still have this cargo ship. So it's like, people don't like Royal Seal, but this is it's this cheaper than Royal Seal, and the card is being added extra to your hand. It's not like top decking it. Like, like tracker top decks, you know? And people don't like tracker. This is, puts it into your hand. But it costs three. So, like, compare this to Tracker. Like, wow. This... Okay, well, no. You can only do it once per turn. So, it's not like Tracker exactly. But it, it, I think it's reasonable for an opener. Yeah. Let's go to the next card. Hideout. Um, so, it's a four-cost action. Plus one card, plus two actions. Trash a card from your hand. If it's a victory card, gain a curse. Well, it's a village. Oh, but you're for... Okay, so you're forced to trash the card. That's a problem. Well, not... Honestly, not really, because, um, you know, you trash a victory card, you get a curse, but then later you're just going to trash the curse. So it's like... So if it takes victory cards, it takes, like, two two cycles to trash a victory card. But... Um, if you're trashing coppers, it only takes one turn. Except, the thing is, if you have, like, a deck... If you're relying this as your only village, it's going to... You're going to be, like... It's going to be like worse than rats. Like you're just going to trash your deck and not even have a deck of rats to show for it. You're just going to be like, I have three hideouts and now I that's all I have. And um, they don't multiply. That's kind of a sad card. But if you have just one hideout or two, um, that's, that's pretty great. I think the whole point of this card is like, it's like a trasher, but it's doing something well. Like at the same time, it's being a village at the same time. So like early mid game to mid game, it's a great card. Um, just you don't want to load up on this as your only village unless like you know fortress is there but you know assuming there's no project or something or ex another card uh this is a scary card it's actually the art looks like shanty town but like done well you know this is what shanty town could have looked like but no no it's like you know Take Shanty Town, go back to you know, like last card was a cargo ship, so it felt very seaside. This is also, you know, actually Shanty Town wasn't even a seaside card. That's that's how bad, that's how off putting it looks. That it was actually an intrigue card. So, whoops. But yeah, look at this. This is like call back to Shanty Town. Come on, except the guy has a lantern, so maybe not. And then the guy in front looks like he has a weird hat. He looks like some kind of uh, one of those guys. Uh, from the, I don't know, like the Witchwood from Hearthstone or like uh, Bloodborne or something. I don't know. We were just talking about Bloodborne like the other day. So, yeah. Next card. Improve. So, I'm assuming this is going to be a remodel variant. I'm impre I'm surprised we haven't come up, thought of this one yet. Improve. So, it's a three cost action. Gives you plus two coins. Okay, that's interesting. So, at the start of cleanup, you may trash an action card you would discard from play this turn. To gain a card costing exactly one more than it. Ooh. So, it's a terminal silver, and if it's paired with another action, um, you would discard from play. So it has to be an action you actually played. So it can't be an action from your hand. That's that's tricky. So early game, it's not super great. But if you pair this, if you let, let's say open with a four cost cantrip or something like I don't know tournament or um, what are those other cards? Any, any four-cost village. I don't know. 
and then you play improve you could put that into a five cost but you lose the action and uh you could only do it once per improve but you if you play it's stack like if you play three improves you hit three action different actions so it's it's actually an interesting word because at the start of cleanup you may trash an action you would discard and play this turn so it's like you have to know that you would discard an action this turn so that means I'm assuming it can't hit um I think it's like a tracking thing like if let's say the duration cards you can't trash a duration card the first time like the first time you play a duration card you won't be able to trash it because it's not going to be discarded this turn I don't know why it's not just when you discard a card like like scheme when you discard uh, a card you may trash it to gain one but then it loses track like I, I see why it's like this because how are you supposed to trash a card you just discarded all right it's not forget the wording but yeah I I, I, I like this card a lot actually it's like you know, middle is turn like the middle of the game is when I kind of want to be upgrading my actions and upgrade costs five and this costs three and it gives plus two, but it's terminal. But it's it's an effect you want reasonably often, actually. I like it. Let's go into the next one. Inventor. So it's a four cost action. Gain a card up to f costing up to four. Then cards cost one less this turn, but not less than zero. So. Wow, so it's like bridge, but it doesn't give the plus one money. It doesn't give the plus buy, but it stacks with itself. So let's say the first inventor you play gains a four, then the next one's got to gain a five, and then the next one can gain a, a gold or something. I like how it stacks with itself, and then uh, it it actually combos. It works with throne room. So like if you let's say play a throne room, play this inventor, the cards will be cost by two by two less. So that's kind of cool, kind of crazy, but. Maybe without the buy, plus, like, it's, like, self-contained. Like, it's it combos with itself, but it doesn't combo with, like, your other sources of buy or money. So maybe it's less crazy than Bridge when Bridge is good. But, you know, you play, like, nine of these. Let's see. The fourth inventor is going to be able to gain province. So that's still kind of a mega turn. Like, not as crazy as Bridge, but you're still getting, like, five provinces, like, three duchies. So, so it's kind of cool. I And as an opener... I could see it as an like as an opener for like workshop. Imagine like you open workshop, uh, and you okay, you have like estate estate, uh, copper copper workshop. You would gain a four and only buy a two, but this you gain a four and then you could buy a three like a silver. So that's so it's like workshop with plus one co plus one coin on it for four, and it gains itself like because it's an inventor. Like inventor gains it costs four. So that's all around solid card I think. But only in the right deck. Like you have to, if it's like your only action you're playing, it's not really impressive unless there's a four you really want. But then, is that really a game that you're only playing one action a turn? I don't know. Maybe if there's a cantrip or something. I don't know. Lackeys is the next one. So, it's a two cost action. It's plus two cards. When you gain this, get plus two villagers. Okay, so that's honestly really that's really good. Like. Villagers are so nice to have at the beginning of your turn. Um, it makes it so that maybe this is like a lab twice and then... Or it's like a lost city once, like a plus two cards, plus two actions. And then uh, for the rest of it, it's a moat. But for for two costs, that's like a reasonable deal. And maybe trash this later. But like if you need to... You could also like do things like you. let's say you have uh, that card inventor. You gain... You gain this, and then you gain the villagers right away, so you can continue your turn. So any gainer lets you, like, gain this as like a loaning your, you're like loaning actions the villagers, in exchange for getting this one junk card in your deck. But it's not completely junk; it's plus two cards. Um, that's pretty solid. Uh, can you make a deck of just these? Well, if you have villages already, like if you're building a, a moat. Village deck. It's pretty good because, like, if you start your turn without villages, you could play this. Likely, you're going to have a villager left over. So you play this, you spend your villager, and then you keep drawing with the villager. So it could save you, like, a turn or two. That's kind of... That's pretty pretty nice for its cost. Uh, so it has some neat tricks, but it's maybe not my favorite here. It's, like, kind of... But it's still good. Like, a lot of these cards are, like, really interesting and good. And I like the flavor and the art. Pretty crisp. And the paintbrush insignia there at the bottom right. Anyway, next card. Old Witch. So we had 
the original witch from the base set, and then we had Cornucopia with Young Witch. Now we have Old Witch. It kind of looks like the Young Witch, actually. Look at that. It's like the Young Witch uh, has a very, I think, puffy. Uh, there's a there's still the rat there. I, I forgot if the uh, Young Witch had a rat. I think it did. I, it had some sort of animal pet or something. And this is has a rat now. And let's let's see what it does. Plus three, so it's five cost action attack. Plus three cards. Each other player gains a curse and may trash a curse from their hand. Um. Okay, but it's still giving you plus three cards. So that's kind of that's pretty reasonable. That's really uh, neat. So it's like kind of like a, a smithy, and then you uh, you kind of junk your opponent by one card for a little bit. So it's kind of like. Uh, like embassy, but you're actually giving the other guy a jump card eventually, not just like oh you gain a silver right away and the silver is like oh it's a yellow curse, but actually it's helping them buy other embassies and other cards. So I I guess this this which is more generous is them not like beat you down giving you ten curses here you can eventually trash some of the curses unless there's a discard attack. So if you play a discard attack and then you play old witch that's like masquerade that's like militia masquerade but not as bad because Eventually the curses end and you're not being forced to pass a good card. But, you know, it's still a reasonably strong thing to do. And, you know, the thing is, it's plus three cards. Maybe that you need this to draw anyway. So it's kind of... Um, you're going to get this anyway and then the cursing is kind of a nice bonus because maybe it stops being effective, but... And each time you play it, it'll help trash a curse. So when the curses run it out, eventually there'll be a clean deck. But in the mid-game, like... Making them, slowing them down in the mid-game is, like, worth something, you know? That's kind of an important effect. So that's when you snowball. You don't care if they're pretty thin by the end. If you're ahead of them because they were junked and they couldn't get good cards in the mid-game, you still did something well. Uh, so it's, it, I think it's stronger than it looks. Plus, like, you have to, they're not always going to have a curse in their hand. So I think it's just a card you don't want to um, sleep on, as you say. So the Patron, okay, the Patron. So it's a four-cost action reaction. Plus one villager, plus two coins. Okay, so that's like a non... That's like a silver non-terminal. Like, it's like a silver action form. Um, when something causes you to reveal this, using the word reveal, plus one coffers. Okay. How many... How many times do you have to reveal... How many cards are like that you have to reveal something? Um, there's like wishing well... There's, um, I don't know, but like attacks like rabble. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff. Any, like, actually, any uh, attack that tries to, like, attack, um, that tries to reveal tops on the top of a player's deck is going to reveal the coffers. But I'm more interested in this, like, top part, you know, the plus one villager, the plus two coin. That's kind of good. That's, like, okay, if you don't, um, if you draw with another action, you could play it as a silver. But if you don't draw it with an action, you save the villager. And then the next turn you have a good extra villager that can be used as an action. So villagers can be, I should mention this, uh, villagers can be exchanged for action at any point and coffers can be exchanged for a coin during the buy phase. I, I kind of like this card a lot. It kind of has that, like if I was going to get a silver anyway, I'll get this and it'll help me out. It's kind of like uh, Conclave, which is like plus two coins and then uh, you may play an action that you don't already have in play already and if you do you get one plus one action that was kind of a cool card kind of a nice support card this is a nice support card as well giving you money and not being a bother and maybe even helping you out on later turns with the villagers if you start saving them and then there's whatever combos are around with the coffers uh, with the bottom part uh, theme wise well it's yeah like you feel it's the patron as you're like asking the patron for money and he gives you coffers that's kind of cool Research. Um, okay, so this is a four cost action duration. Plus one action. Treasure card from your hand. Per one it costs. Set aside a card from your deck face down. On this. At the start of your next turn, put those cards into your hand. Okay, wow. That is, that's like a delayed uh, apprentice. That's, and plus one action. So this is really like an apprentice. It costs four, but... You're getting those cards at the start of your hand, but you don't get them this turn. That's the thing with this. Uh, it's 
you set all those cards face down on this, and next turn is going to be great, but this turn, if you're like already like doing a lot and you're drawing most of your deck, you're going to lose those cards that are going to help you later in this turn. So it's kind of like... It reminds me of Storyteller, but you have to sacrifice uh, the, some power in your turn to get the draw in his. You sacrifice some power for the draw next turn. So, um, but you know, it's still a trasher. So, like, it's a four cost trasher. So you could open with it, and you could trash like an estate, and then a top deck two card. Uh, put two cards on this, and then next turn you have um, an extra two cards to work with, like Wharf. So that's kind of good. That's. Is I think this is really good in the early game to trash the estates. Later on, it's fine if you trash like a four cost or some other trasher or some other card you don't need anymore. But and then you get a mega turn, so it's kind of like you trash a card to get the tactician effect. Partially, you don't get the extra action on the buy, but you get something reasonable. You get the cards, so that's it's tricky. This is not for every board, but I think. Uh, um, in boards that are not like very consistent, like they we're not drawing the deck every turn, uh, this is quite good as long as you have a source of gaining actions. So this could be really explosive if you have like two of them and a source of actions, but or like fortress. But you know, in some games, it's just not gonna work to your benefit. That that said, it's still trashing. It could still trash coppers for like non-terminally. It's still quite a good card, I think. Scepter. Uh, this is a 5 cost treasure. When you play this, choose 1. Uh, plus 2 coin. Or replay an action card you played this turn that's still in play. Huh. So it's like a silver, but it lets you play an action during the buy phase, which could be... Well, any of those terminal silvers that helped you get this. Like, uh, what, what, what did we just see? We saw Patron. We saw... Well, in the review, re not flag bearer, but uh, we saw um, uh, in improve. We saw we saw a bunch of things that give plus two coins. So, just in its own set, there's a few things you could do, and it's just like you know, getting an extra villager or something. That's kind of nice. And if if not, it's still worth plus two, and it's ter non-terminal. But you know, so is patron. So, patron seems like a bad idea to play with this. Uh, there's got to be something better you can do, like. Any draw, anyway, because the thing is you play a treasure, but you haven't bought anything. So you can choose to replay your old witch or something, and something that draws. And then you get more cards, and then maybe you draw another scepter. Uh, it's it's like a non-terminal copy, an action. So it's kind of like a th throne room at the end of your turn. But uh, it, co it can only be played on the buy phase. So like, the weakness of the card is that you're playing the action in the buy phase where it might not do much, but... You could still play any actions, uh, treasures you draw in the buy phase before you buy anything. So that's just, um, it's five, but maybe it's not super good, but like I could see where it's inconsistent. But I think it, with certain cards, with the right cards, especially draw cards, it's it's great because you're going to play draw cards that draw into the treasure and then you it draws into this and you could still play this because it doesn't cost an action. And then you could draw again, and if that uh, draw card did something like uh, like Torturer or the Old Witch or uh, Patrol from Second Edition Intrigue, uh, any attack to, because it's like if you play an attack that also generates money, like uh, Montebank or something, it's reasonable. But you have to you would have to draw it with the Montebank. No, this is this is uh, a strange one. This is like. You want to have an action dense deck, but then you just buy the actions. Like, why do you need a treasure? I guess it's like if you if you have a lot of actions, but you don't have a lot of terminal space. But there's a terminal you want to play twice or three times. This is kind of like take the best action in your deck and then add plus one action to it. That's kind of that's kind of good in the right deck. So, but you know, five cost treasures have issues. Like, let's say with well, with Renaissance, there was... Uh, not Renaissance, Nocturne, there was Idol. And if you drew two Idols, they cursed the opponent. That was kind of good. But you had to, like, draw the two Idols. So, here again, it's kind of like... If you're drawing... If you can draw a lot... and you, you only have to draw one Scepter. But if you draw a lot, it's good. If not, it's... An overpriced Silver. I don't know. Spices. This is... A five-cost Treasure again. So, we're getting with the Treasures. So, it's worth two money... 
and it gives plus buy, and when you gain this, you get plus two coffers. So... It's like, imagine you're overpaying for silver, uh, and then it has plus buy, and then you get coffers back. So, like, like see, let's say you have silver, you overpay by two, and then you get that back in coffers. We haven't seen a card like that, like where you overpay and you get coffers, and this is it. This is kind of like it, where you're overpaying for coffers. Um, but the card you're getting is a silver with a buy, so it's not, it's not the worst thing, but it's not like it's a super card you want at least loading up on. But if you like gain it some other way, like let's say what is it, uh, mine or mint or, well, you're still getting a silver, and then you're just getting plus two coffers, so that's nice tactically. But you still, how much silver do you want? It's like silver, but then the first ten times you play it, you can get like a gold, or it's. It's not so bad actually, because it it gives the plus buy, so you kind of want plus buy, and the coffers they could be better than they look, especially if you're trying to spike a price point. Um, and then this helps you because it's a silver, so maybe helps you hit those price points. And some projects are pretty expensive, so maybe there's some hope for it, but it's not the most exciting card. So okay, so now we're at the projects. So the way the projects work is. Um, Every player has two cubes, like two projects they can buy max, and then they buy the project and the the project is theirs for the rest of the game. And two people, two or more people can have the same project. They could both buy the same project, and they both get the effect of it. So it's just two projects you can buy per game. You put your cube on it, and you get the effects, whatever the effect is. So the first project is Academy. It costs five, um, and when you gain an action card. Uh, when you get an action card plus one villager, I, I'm I'm just trying to absorb that because it seems quite good. But if all the actions were terminal anyway, it's kind of like okay, you could play that action one more time before you run out of actions to play all your terminals. But it's like you buy this, and every time you gain an action, like you'll be able to play it. For free next turn, like you'll be play able to play it non terminally the next shuffle, so it's like kind of gives every action that you gain um, one shuffle where it doesn't cost you an action if you save the villager for that action. Um, that's if you're just gaining one action a turn, and that's kind of I I, I like that a lot as a good in terms of money games that could be interesting. But if you're getting a lot of actions per turn, of course this is explosive, right? You know, you gain you workshop for something and you gain an action and you get the villager right away and then you buy like four uh border guards, I don't know, now you have plus four villager and then you're never gonna dud again because you start off your turn with a old witch and you just play it and then you plus one villager. You don't even care if you do an uh, a village uh, with it. But it costs five, so like you're giving up a uh, five, and that early on that hurts a lot. So the fives are really good for getting your deck online. But this is once you already have your deck, kind of you once you have the cards, like once you have enough actions, you could get this. But at the same time, if you wanted to get this early so that you picked up the villagers while you were getting those actions, it's it's an interesting decision when you have to buy this. I kind of I like it for that. It's a good interesting trade off because it could be good early, it could be good late, but it's not always good early and it's not always good late. So, when to get this is going to change uh, per game, each game. Next is Barracks. At the start of your turn, plus one action. Uh, that's, like, vanilla, but it's... it's. I, I was always saying, I was saying for a while that starting a, your turn with Villagers is really good. Uh, because you can just, you don't care if you drew an, your Village or not. You can just play one of your cards that draws. And... Um, then draw into a village. So this just gives you the action every turn. So it's like a, a villager every turn that you're forced to spend. So it's not really a villager at all. It's just an extra action every turn. Um, so that's good too. That's obviously if, like having a villager some of the time at the beginning of a turn is good. And having an action every time is really good. And if this is the only source of like extra actions that let you play more terminals, then, um, then it becomes a two-terminal game. And two-terminal games are... Often, I find it quite a bit more interesting than one terminal games. It's not like any number of ter like lots of terminal games. It's not like a one terminal game. Two terminal games have some intrigue, 
interestingness to them. And uh, it costs six. I mean, a, a six cost, you can, like, buy, what was it, Lost Arts? That just gives all of a certain action plus one action. And usually you'd put that on the draw card. And that would smoke this out of the water. But sometimes you have a variety of cards and you don't want too many. And I don't know. It kind of looks bad compared to Lost Arts. But it's it's something. Maybe you don't draw the... You maybe have more than one draw card. I don't know what's what's up with this. But it's still reasonably good. Just maybe not as crazy as Lost Arts on the right board. But uh, the thing is, if you have only a certain number of actions, this is every turn. So like per shuffle, you're maybe getting more actions than Lost Arts would give you. Anyway. Canal, it's a seven cost project. So this is during your turns, cards cost one less but not less than zero. So it's a one time, you could buy this once, right? So you can't rebuy the same project. So seven cost, all cards cost one less forever during your turns. Um, it's great with plus buy, obviously. Uh, that's mainly when this is good. Otherwise, you're you're paying seven for like an extra coin. Like imagine if this was like seven cost during your turns, uh, at the start of your turn, plus one coin. That wouldn't be too great. It's not even a plus one coffer. It's just a plus one coin. And if you don't need that extra coin, that's kind of wasted. So that would be pretty bad. Uh, but with, with plus buy, you get that discount every time. Um, yeah, it's not a very efficient rate having to spend seven for that effect. And it's only by one less. But this is not a card in your deck. You don't have to use a terminal. It's there every turn. Even if you have a dud turn, you can maybe use the... You can use that one less action. It's, it's kind of... It's like pretty expensive. It's kind of like Prince. Often it's like too expensive to be worth it. But on the right board, sometimes you, you do want this. And it could pay off. But it's not like obvious that you want this. So I think it's a simple project. But like it's a welcome project. It's fine. Capitalism. Okay. I don't know what this does. But I've been seeing a lot of peop like buzz about this card. It, it, like, so either the rules like on this card are really confusing. Or it's like donate level strong. I'm not sure why like there's so much like talk on the forums about like you know uh, capitalism capitalism why are people freaking out about this card let's find out what people are freaking out about this card during your turns actions with plus money amounts in their text are also treasures okay so yeah it is the the first thing where it's like really confusing really weird rules change like really confusing um So if a, a card is a treasure, it means that during the buy phase you can spend, you can play it without spending an action. So right away, capitalism makes it so that all of your cards, that actions that generate money, uh, in their text with plus, plus something in their text. So like you have to really parse the the card. So if it's like a uh, poor house or something, you have to like look. It's like is it is it giving me plus money? Well, if it has a plus sign and has the coin sign, then yes. So it gives all those cards for five. It gives all of those cards um, plus one action, but it's like the trade-off with scepter. Like you're you're getting plus one action, but at the cost of you have to b play the buy phase when you might not want to be playing that card anymore. But like any any draw, well, how many draw cards actually give money? Not not very many. There's like um, mercenary or something. Uh, but what what are other stuff? So what's advantages of treasures? Well, if there's like bank, obviously like it means your whole deck is boosting bank. There's some interactions with uh, stuff. I think there's a thing that what happens if you this interacts with uh, um, inheritance. I guess if the action that's set aside with inheritance is uh, gives plus coin, then it's also a treasure. What does that mean to have an action victory treasure? Well, we have action victory. We have action treasures. Uh, we have victory treasures already. Um, so I don't see. It's good for combos, but rules wise, I think it's fine. Um. Yeah, this is actually really exciting. Card. Like I can see like why people were like hyped about capitalism because I'm also pretty hyped about capitalism. Seeing it, thinking about it now, like the implications of this is kind of like more crazy lost arts but also has some other synergies because of treasures being good um, just for the sake of being treasures. And like you can, if 
all of your actions with plus coin are treasures. That means you can play them with Storyteller. So you have, uh, what is it, uh, all your tournaments, all your peddlers. You play three of the peddlers with Storyteller. And now all of those peddlers are playing non-terminally and they're giving you an action. And then you draw a bunch of cards and you have an extra... Uh, like some w wacky stuff. And also like mint, like being able to... Uh, during your turns, actions of plus. So it also counts things in the supply. So you can like mine something like a treasure. Like you can mine a treasure into an action card with this if the action card gives plus money because it's during your turn and the actions in the supply still count. So the action cards become treasure cards too in the supply. And then you can, you can like mint it. You can like mine into them. You can. What other cards care about? Uh, um, treasures. Anyway, you can you can use your imaginations, I guess. The next card is Cathedral. It's a three cost project. Uh, at the start of your turn, trash a card from your hand. Okay, so in the was well, not the uh, the teasers. There was a Donald Alex Vaccarina said something about there's a trasher that you can't turn off. Uh, this is the trasher that you can't turn off. So it trashes a card every turn. You can't stop it. So. That's kind of scary because you want you know you want to be trashing and normally you want to say, oh but I want my trashing as early as possible isn't that what I want? Well yes but if you buy this at the beginning of the game by the end of the game it'll have trash ten cards. So one ten ten turns might be too late to trash all of your cards. Two if the game goes on really long you're gonna run out of stuff to trash. Um. And every time you're not going to you're not you're gonna have be able to buy less cards because you're gonna be trashing your coppers and you won't have as much to spend. I I don't see the best like it's not gonna be obvious when the best timing is for this. Probably like yeah, you buy it at the beginning of the game and then ten turns, maybe the game's only gonna last ten turns and by the end of that like by five turns you have like almost no junk cards and by by turn ten you have like almost no junk cards. Uh, but then afterwards, if the game doesn't end, you're gonna be starting to hit your good actions, and you're starting gonna start to like really suffer. Um, probably buy this like you know your average game ends like turn sixteen or something or eighteen or like, you know you, like if you have a good gauge when the game's gonna end, you can get this at like turn five or something and start getting some trash. But at the same time, so if you want trash, you also you often want to trash a lot early on. And then stop trashing later and just buy stuff. So this is like very gradually trashing. So it's kind of like Rat Catcher. Like you kind of occasionally trash a card. But it's just faster than Rat Catcher. You're trashing more quickly than Rat Catcher. But then you can't turn it off. I I really don't have the best feel for this card. I feel like it's really going to be tough a tough sell. But hey maybe something that was opening it works out. And you don't care if you're trashing a silver occasionally. Probably buy this like turn three or something. That might be a good time to get this. City Gates. It's another three cost project. At the start of your turn, plus one card. Then put a card from your hand onto your deck. Uh. So that's. That's good if you have like not a lot of actions and you have like you're worried that like two cards that you can't play at the same turn, uh, get stuck in the same hand. Well, you just put put it into your next hand. So it's kind of like adds that courtyard element to all of your hands every turn. But you have to do it at the start of the turn so you don't necessarily know what you want to set aside. So if like you also want to like see a good card for the start of your next turn, you can't and your turn is already going to kick off, you can't really do that because because uh, it's too late uh, at the start of your turn. It's not when you want to be top ticking the card, but if it is when you want to be top ticking the card, then all the power to you. But it's also Basically, letting you start with a six-card hand in terms of kicking off. Like, how often is do you have six cards and you need all six cards of those cards in your hand to like get your turn to be good? You like you need a certain combination of cards in your hand, and usually it's less than six. So if you have like five core cards and like one extra one, then you just top deck the extra one. You have those five cards to work with. Um, so it's basically you buy it for three, and basically your your starting hand is you have six cards in your starting hand. In terms of finding your actions. But it's not helping you cycle. Because it's not helping you cycle. And it's like getting to the bottom of your deck. 
because you're putting your card back and it's not uh, helping you increase their hand size on its own but it is helping you find like ever so slightly helping you find your actions and lining them up together so it's for its price for three it's a good deal crop rotation cost six uh, let's see I hope this is good at the start of your turn you may discard a victory card for plus two cards hey that's I, I like the flavor of that that's I, I know victory cards are green and they're not actually crops but they are green and you're discarding one for plus two cards so it's like a free one time forget the shepherd comparison this is you're basically discarding a victory card and you're getting the lab effect so you're discarded a, a victory and you get a six card hand so compared to city gate it's just or like it's like compared to city gate it's like oh, this is almost like plus one card at the start of your turns if you have a victory card and maybe towards the end of the game or in the middle of the game or if you have estates you have estates very often in your starting hand so this is like you pay six and instead of hireling where you have to like play the hireling and then you have to wait the next turn to get the plus one card you get this right away you buy it once and you right away you start getting the plus cards and it's better than plus one card because you discard the victory and draw two cards so you're drawing a card and replacing the victory card at the cost of you have to have a victory card in your hand but if you have like i don't know something uh, some something like mill where it's like a victory card but it's also an action that you don't mind having in your hand that's really good so cool card not always going to be relevant sometimes it's better to just trash the uh trash the estates and if you're not going to have like a victory card in your hand every turn and it's not maybe worth pick buying six just to and keeping the estates just to get this effect off you're better off just trashing those estates but uh in the right deck this is this is quite nice Exploration. Uh, so there's expedition and adventures and all this exploration, and it's also a, a ship and uh, reminds me of some old CD-ROM game from the nineties or something. Anyway, at the at the end of your buy phase, if you didn't buy any cards, plus one coffers and plus one villager. So. Reminds me a bit of Madman, right? It's, if you don't buy anything, you can still gain stuff. But if you don't buy anything, uh, you get you save a villager and you save a coffers. The villager is really nice because it makes it so that you kick off. You have much better chance of kicking off next turn. And the coffers is also kind of nice because it helps you spike price points and maybe it helps you hit eight if you are, otherwise would have had seven. But you have to not buy anything. But if you were just going to buy a silver, if all the good cards cost four or more, maybe you buy this at some point. If this attacks, especially like if someone's hitting this, you with this, this card attacks, this is gonna matter a lot. This is it might be a waste. Like sometimes it's not great because like just like baths and stuff. Like you, sometimes you don't gonna want to spend a turn not buying anything, and you're not getting a madman like Herman. You're not getting something super great. You're just getting a plus one action, which is what madman gives you. But it also give madman also gives you a bunch of cards. This just gives you an extra coffer. But it's not taking space. Uh, reasonable card. You just have to. Like it's it's a tough sell to not be able to buy anything. Sometimes you can get that off. But even when you do. It's not like it wins you the game. It's not like doing anything spectacular. It's just like. Sometimes you have bad turns. Or sometimes you don't need to, need to buy. And you're just going to buy a project. Or you're going to buy a uh, event. From like Adventures or. Um. Um, Empire. So if you're buying events, this is really good. If you're, if you're not going to be buying events often, let's say you're going to be buying summon almost every turn, then this is good to have because it's like you're getting the coffers and the villagers. So that's has some good synergies, but without the synergies, it's kind of a tough sell. It's kind of like better than baths, but not supremely better than I don't know. So fleets again. There's a lot of these ships. Um, gives that seaside feel again. So five cost project after the game ends there's an extra round of turns just for players with this okay um that is really interesting tactically that's like um 
You guys are dancing around provinces and you're worried about someone ending the game on piles. Well, you buy this and then if someone tries to end the game on piles, well, that's going to be very bad for them because you could just buy victory cards. Um, also, just like ends the game even if it's on your turn. So let's say you buy a province, like you buy the last province, and then you get an extra turn because you have a fleet and then you can buy like some duchies. And maybe that wins you the game. Like there's, or if you're doing something crazy with the amount of cards you have, and like you're buying a whole bunch of victory cards every turn, you buy the fleet right before your last turn, and then you you finish the game off, and then you finish the game off again with the getting more duchies. So it's good in really crazy decks, and it's good. It's maybe tactical in like some other games, but then it costs five, so you could have just bought a duchy. So it's not. It's actually pretty bad if you're only getting one buy per turn. I think. And then there's an interesting thing, because if someone else gets a fleet, you can also get the fleet. So, like, both players have the fleet. Um, so they cancel each other out. So, you know, maybe force someone is able to buy a fleet, and that kind of forces you to buy a fleet to not lose. And honestly, I feel kind of crummy. Like, the game is supposed to end with the provinces, and then it doesn't because there's another fleet. And then, like, you guess it takes an extra turn. The game, like, it, I can make it for some epic moments, but really it's just going to be, like, cruelly it's gonna be a cruel tactical thing that you get and uh it's gonna make the game even more like head head numbing like mind numbing it's gonna be like hurting your brain just like knowing that there's an extra turn no matter what you do you're gonna be like pausing extra hard when you're considering if you should buy the last province um yeah but if like in the right hands like you buy this let's say on the last turn uh, of your mega, let's say you buy a, a bunch of victory cards and you buy this the last turn. They, the other person can't do anything to stop that, and you just get an extra turn and you get another turn to buy everything. So, like that's the thing; it's not always going to be relevant this card, but when it's relevant, it's kind of like you might have to buy it. You have to find a good time to buy it, which is going to be as close to the end of the game as possible. But, um. Uh, so I kind of like that idea, but like not obviously you don't want the game to end under you. So I kind of like the idea of it's like a, you need to play a game of trick and to buy this as late as possible so that you're getting the most out of the other cards, the other five that you would have sp uh, bought instead of this. So yeah. Uh, I'm going to move on from now. So the next is Guild Hall. It's a five cost project. When you gain a treasure plus one coffers. Okay, so there was a... There was a project where whenever you gain an action... It's plus one action. And I already forgot how much that costs. This is five. Every two, Whenever you get a treasure, plus one coffers. Um, this has a potential to be a lot more... Like, it's it's weird, but like you can actually get, get a lot more explosive with this card than the one that gives you actions. Because with the thing that gives you actions, it's just like you your deck is going to do as much as your deck can do. Like, no matter how many villagers you have, it's just the maximum potential of your deck is whatever actions are in your deck. Here with the treasures, if you can get a bunch of treasures somehow in the same turn, uh, you just get coffers and you can buy provinces several turns in a row. Um, like you have, you overpay for master. Imagine you have a five, and then you overpay for masterpiece by like eight, and you get like six coffers and a bunch of silvers, or you buy raid, or you buy like a bunch of conquests, and you get all these coffers that you can't spend the turn of because, well, you can if you didn't buy the treasure. If you gain the treasure somehow, instead of buying it. You get the plus one coffers you can spend on the buy phase. But once you start buying cards, you can't spend the coffers anymore until the next turn. Um, or like Delve from Empires. There's, just, there's a bunch of things where it's so easy to get a treasure. And it's easy to get a bunch of them. It's just that your deck won't be as consistent. But if you're getting coffers every time, that's like each one of those treasures is producing an extra plus one coin at their best moment possible. But better than that because you could spike things. And then Ace is... Like, this is, uh, don't sleep on this card. This is one of those things, like, Dev, where it's like, it look, doesn't look that amazing, but it's actually quite impactful, this card, in the right circumstances. You have to not imagine, like, also Beggar giving you three coppers, and then you hit, like, an extra plus three, plus one coffers and stuff. It's, well, towards the end. And if anything, like, if you're able to gain multiple treasures, anytime you're able to gain multiple treasures per turn, or just one treasure per turn, uh, getting the extra coffer is fine. Uh, next card. Pageant. It looks like some sort of puppet show. I don't know why this is a pageant. 
Uh, those people don't look human. Uh, so it's a three cost project. At the end of your buy phase, you may pay one coin for one plus one coffers. Um, I'm not sure if you can do that for as many coins as you have or just once. At the end of your buy phase, you may pay one. So it's I think it's you can only do it once. So you can only pay up to one and then get a coffers, which is I I like that. Sometimes you hit seven. And you only need to buy a six, or you hit six, you only need to buy a five. So you're kind of like saving a copper, but better because you're saving a coffers and you don't have to draw the coffers. It's just there for you. Um, and it costs three, so sometimes you don't want a silver and you can get this instead. And kind of like a nice overpay bonus, like save. It's not crazy, like save. Save is you have an extra coin and you could buy the save, get an extra buy, and like put something into your next hand. That's kind of really good a lot of the time this is just you get uh, plus one coffers but those those add up so you're basically saving you're saving money without having to get an action card that specifically gets coffers so that's good uh, next one is Piazza okay so I heard about the name of this card and it said Plaza like it always said Piazza so I'm like okay I can remember that I know Plaza is a card but Piazza is like six letters but now I'm seeing it all caps and then the I like Uppercase I looks like lowercase L, so it like really looks like Plaza now. So it's actually Piazza. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Oh, so it's a five-cost project. At the start of your turn, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's an action, play it. Uh. So if it's an, so it's like doing the Herald thing. It's like you have a Herald every turn. If if it hits an action, that means you gain plus one card, plus one action, essentially. Like you're playing that action for free and you didn't have to draw it. Um, and if it's a patron, you get a plus one coffers. Okay, so there's another card that reveals patron. So, um, it's like you have so little control of this most of the time. It feels like kind of crummy that most of the time this is going to miss. Unless you, like your deck is just stuffed with actions. And then if it's stuck with actions, why do you need the piazza? Unless you like have no draw. But it's... Just, it's 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 like a fun it's like it's fun it's cool, but it just seems like annoying. Like at least I'm not spending an action like with uh, what's called Vassal. I'm probably severely underrating this card. Like getting that extra turn, like having the option to get like an extra card in action every turn, or almost every turn is like it sounds. It's really good if you could keep hitting it, but just like how do you control that um, with density? Then it's like a start of your turn, so you don't have too much freedom there. But you know. Again, I think I'm overrating it. It costs five, but I mean, I think I'm underrating it. But it it just seems more like a fun thing than an actual thing that's great all the time. Uh, Road Network. It's a five cost project. Uh, when another player gains a victory card, plus one card. Kind of reminds me of uh, well, the what's it called? Uh, innovation, the board game where someone else gets a, in one of the expansions. Someone else gets a a score card and you get like an extra card for that uh whatever um gains a victory card so it's usually people if people are just going for provinces um like you're only going to draw a few cards it's like okay he buys a province and now i have plus one card great but i spent five on this five um how many more provinces is he going to buy and is he going to buy them at the right time that i actually need the plus one card it, it seems so expensive for what this does. I mean, unless the guy's going, like, someone's going nuts, going, like, um, um, Gardens Rush or Rushing Estates or getting a lot of duchies. It's just like, okay, you're getting a plus one card each time, but, like, if they're only gaining one card a turn, you're only getting plus one card. So it's, that's good. So it actually gives you, like, if someone's rushing for green cards, it gives, like, let's say, the guy not rushing for green cards a bit of an extra edge. Because um, you have six cards instead of five. But it costs five. So you could have bought a really good card for five. You could have bought the green card that the other person's getting. Like, let's say you hit you you buy a road network because you don't want the person getting a bunch of mills or nobles. Well, if, for let's say mills. So you spend five, and every time your opponent tries to get a mill, you get plus one card. But... You could have just bought a mill yourself. Why don't you just contest the pile? Like, why do you have to spend five and for this one-time benefit? But 
like it matters sometimes the plus one card like with like lost city sometimes it, it saves you but it's it seems like pretty narrow the timing for this card i don't i don't know when the best time would be to get this one or how many how many games this is going to be around when the person is getting a lot of victory cards cuz it's another player in multiplayer in three three or more player games this is a lot better cuz people are going to be buying like each person is going each player is going to be getting a victory card so then it becomes a lot better in multiplayer cuz there's like 12 victory cards for each pile um yeah in multiplayer this is a lot better because if it's plus two cards consistently, or like if it's plus one card and then plus two cards sometimes, it's like it's a lot better. It's like actually worth buying it at that point easily. At sometimes plus one card at five and towards the end of the game, but uh, if someone is green, if someone is getting green cards, that's usually when you should be getting green cards too. Like that's not. That's not true, but it's often the case, and especially if the game is just going to pile out and the person gets one duchy and piles out, this is like kind of worthless because by the time they get a victory card, um, the game is over. Or, like, you would have... That card maybe saves your turn and lets you like counter their play, but it's, it's really unlikely, I find. The next card is Sinister Plot. I think this might be the last project. Uh, there were there's 20 projects in all, and uh, six of them were previewed. And uh, you can see uh, my impressions of the previews in a previous video I had. This is the news cards that were revealed. So Sinister Plot, it's a four-cost project. At the start of your turn, add a token here, or remove your tokens here for plus one card each. I don't know what tokens are. Uh, this guy's poisoning food. That's kind of nasty, and he's like hiding it. No one's no one's watching him. That's kind of Weird, but it's pretty dark arts, okay. Um, so I like the theme of it. You're like saving up tokens, and then you're gonna boost for next turn. So you're saving up, like, like already, like every two turns you're getting the plus one card. Uh, I was complaining about road network, like not giving you the plus one card often enough. And if you're getting a plus one card every other turn, um, that's not super great either. But it is four instead of five so it has that over road network that's still not amazing i think what you do is you want to stockpile like it makes sense right you're getting you buy this early and then you wait around a little bit you get the cards you you want to draw together and then like five turns later you chip you cash this in for the plus one cards and then you have all these new actions you buy so you you want to buy this i guess you want to buy this early and then as you're building your deck this is getting stronger so you don't want the cards early on you want the cards later on so this is actually really doing what you want because you're like basically saving up for an explosive turn, and you start saving up. Uh, you can start saving up before the turn, like before you actually need it. So when you finally do need the cards, that's when you can trigger this. You can maybe trigger it like one big time, and then the next time you trigger it, you're just going to be triggering it because it's like almost the last turn of the game. But if the game goes on really long, maybe you can get like a second big turn off of this. Um. But presumably by the time you get you kick off the first turn with like plus three or plus four cards, um, you do something that like gains you a bunch of action cards or something or something that's going to really kick off your deck and you won't need this as much anymore. And this is just going to save you uh, if you have a bad hand, right? Like you draw a hand and it doesn't look good. You can choose to draw some cards to try to save the hand if it's almost there. Or if you have a terrible hand, you just choose not to draw and you stay with the plus one card. Um, I like it a lot. It's just it's another card that's gonna hurt my brain, but I it looks actually pretty solid for what it is. Uh, I think that's the last card. Yes, that is the last card. So, thank you for listening. That was my impressions of the Renaissance cards, and I hope you have fun with them.